grab your favorite chopper and get stuck in because we're making some October ruins. My name's Alex and you're watching Major League Nerd. The first thing we're going to want to do is grab our favorite chopper, also known as utility knife, followed by some foam core, which is going to be the central structure to our build. The first thing we're going to do is measure out the first floor of our ruined walls. We're going to have a little nine inch by three inch and then a five inch by three inch. Like I said, this is just the first floor because we're going to make something that is for Warhammer 40K. Granted, you can use this in any game but we're gonna want something that is over five inches tall so it can benefit from the obscuring rule. After we measure out those walls, we'll begin to measure out those walkways. We're gonna want them about an inch and a half thick so we can put a decent amount of models on them. And one of them is going to be nine inches long. The other one's going to be five inches. And we're actually gonna make two sets of these, one for the first floor, one for the second floor. Now begins the orky process in which we grab that trusty chopper and begin to cut along the lines. Make sure they're nice and clean just so you can mess them up later, have that satisfaction of taking what was once clean and breaking it down. Now that we've got our two walkways and our two walls, we'll be good to move on to the next step. Well, we'll start to bevel the edges. So what this is gonna do, you're gonna take your utility knife and chopper, go down the line, the edges of the walkways, really just making it worn. Now that everything has been beveled, we're gonna grab some sprues laying around. Everyone's got some. If you don't, what are you doing? And you're going to take those sprues and we're gonna chop them up. We're going to use them and make it look like we've got some exposed metal, some exposed rebarb, making this orc fortress, this orc ruins look just like that, or an orc ruin. Grab those walls and start to do the similar thing along the edge of those, making them look like they've taken up one too many las cannon shots to be structurally sound. After that, we're going to start to cut some doors and windows into the walls. Everyone knows that the orc architecture is probably the most artistic, which also means that is it is the least structured and the least um, functional. So just really go to town, have some fun with it. It doesn't have to be uniform. It doesn't have to be perfect in terms of beauty because the orcs see beauty in everything sharp, everything jagged. You know, and if orcs believe that it works, it works. So you'll see, I grabbed an orc model just to see uh, the size of it to make sure it is uh, up to scale, up to code of the orcs, not that they have one, but if they did, it would be orc code. Begin to cut the door and the window, not in any particular fashion besides them being able to walk through it and them being able to shoot through it. They probably aren't thinking about, hey, is this uh, structurally sound? Is this artistically beautiful? Uh, it's more of a, hey, can I shoot through this? Can I punch through this? Can I run through this into uh, into the war? Yes, cool, we're good. Just like your models, your terrain's gonna need a base. So we're gonna make it out of some chipboard. You can use foam core, you can use cardboard, but I like the chipboard because it's thin and slightly durable. So we're gonna make it about an inch and a half thick, then just that nine by five L shape. So then we have a bit of a structure for the flooring of the ruin. Not only do we just need some structure there, but because of the 40K ninth edition rules, we're we're gonna need to be able to touch that obscuring to be able to see through it, which just makes it functional and sexy. Which is what we're all about here at Major League Nerd. Here we begin to assemble the walkways. We just put a little sprue in there along with some glue to give it a bit more connectivity, a bit more structure in it. And then we're gonna make sure everything fits good. All right, moving on. Now you're gonna wanna grab some of the extra foam core, some leftovers, whether it's some scraps or something untouched. And we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna make spiky bits. I don't know how else to describe it. Just look at the video. See, I'm just cutting it like this. It's just kind of like, there's no, there's no method to this madness. It's just cut, 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 create something that kind of look like teeth. And it's just gonna be a nice little, little garnish. It's gonna add a little bit of orkiness to this building. All right, now you can grab another piece and begin to make something that kind of resembles a skull once you've made some teeth. I decided I'm just gonna cut out some triangle eyes, make it look like I was a kid cutting into a pumpkin for Halloween. Uh, the orcs aren't too good at anatomy, they just know that this this kind of goes there, this kind of goes there, and yeah, good enough. So it doesn't have to be perfect, just make it jagged, make it pointy, make it dangerous that if you were gonna fall and trip and then if you land on it, you'd get impaled, then that's a, that's a good factor of whether or not it is orky enough. Next, I grab some corrugated paper, and this is optional. This just adds to a little bit of the jankiness of the orc ruins. It looks to me like just some, some scrap metal, some sheet metal. So we're gonna cut it into some teeth-like structure 
thingies before. We're gonna add it on top, similar to the foam core, but this just, again, adds a bit more texture, adds a bit more uh, character. Now we go back to the foam core where I'm cutting, it's about an inch thick and about three inches tall. We're gonna make some metal bars that will basically hold up the second floor, just continuing to make it look less and less like it's going to stand up once people start shooting at it. Now that we've got all of our building pieces, we can begin to assemble it. I just use super glue. You can use uh, PVA glue, tacky glue, a hot glue gun, but super glue's fast, it's easy, it's not quite as messy as hot glue gun, but it is a bit more expensive, so use whatever glue you feel like. So just making sure that everything is lined up. Because I beveled the sides, I do have to trim down the walkways. I should have uh, done a little bit better, better measuring, but you know, it happens. So just kind of mark it, and then I'll trim it down, making sure that it all fits and that there's not a massive extension of the walkway or that the uh, walls aren't too big for the ruins. We'll just clean it up a little bit. Now that it's all cleaned up, we're just gonna piece it all together as it's starting to have a bit more of that ruined form. Now go ahead and grab those metal bars. I cut out about 11 of those. We're having nine hold it up in the front, then two hold them up in the back. It's not an exact science, orcs rarely count. I don't even know if they know how to count besides the kills and teeth they've got, but we're gonna glue those down to hold up the second floor. And it's gonna be quick and easy. Just make sure the flat side of those are on it so that it gets the most adhesion. You can always use sprues if you need to have that little extra structural sound. There. Now go ahead and grab that second walkway and align it with some glue. And then we're going to be attaching it to the edges of these metal bars. So this is what's gonna be holding up. This is going to be the second floor. Just make sure that it's lined up. You don't want it too slanted, otherwise your models might fall off. We know that orcs are, uh, aren't the best builders, but hey, you know, it has to be functional and sexy. We've already established that. Now it's time to do some decorating. So grab that skull, grab the bits and the bobs, the sharp pieces and the cardboard metal. And so we're gonna glue this on. Dude, just do it wherever you feel it. You know, you could honestly just uh, spray some glue down and close your eyes and throw it at it, see where it sticks. I'm like, yeah, that's good enough. That's as good as it's gonna get for an orc. Lastly, you're gonna glue down the building to its base. You're gonna wanna leave a little bit of lip on each side so then if so an army is coming into it, they can touch it and shoot through it. Or if an army is on the other side, they can touch it and get through it. You don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. You just want enough where it is going to be working along with the rules of 9th edition. Next, you're gonna grab that hot pot, the mod pot, the blob dodge the you're gonna grab the mod podge and black paint mixture there we go and we're going to lay it down thick all over this ruin it's going to add a bit more protection the glue in the mod podge essentially is going to basically seal it in along with giving it a bit of texture so it's not just this flat form foam core it's going to give it structure protection along with some texture and we are back just after this has got a nice thick coat thick with three c's um, there's still a little bit of white blotches there, but we got a nice thick coat of the Mod Podge and black acrylic paint. Guys, and one thing that I didn't mention that I should mention now is that guys, don't use your model paint. Don't use your nice Citadel Army, or the Army, Army paint, I think that's what it's called. I, I go to Michael's to get the cheapest. Each one of these is 79 cents. All right, so as it's dry, I started applying a second base. And so you can see these streaks are definitely, uh, they're still there, but it adds a bit of texture. Uh, like I said, the Mod Podge is giving a bit of texture. So it's not just this boring old wall. Uh, as we, we want it to be 3D, you know, have, have, have a little personality. It's not just uh, boring. You know, if you took it on a date, it wouldn't just, wouldn't, wouldn't be boring, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm like my, my lame joke right there. That was a that was boring right there. So it's it's got personality and it's funny, unlike my joke. <laughs> Up next, we're gonna do our metallic gray. So apparently everything is just gonna be great, guys. It's like that Eiffel 55 song, I was blue, but instead of blue, it's just, I was gray. And I'm gray and I'm gray. Starting three, two. So now we've hit it with starting to uh, we've given it a couple layers of this metallic paint making it look like metal wow crazy concept right so now we're going to be thinking about how we want to paint this we can paint this another metallic color but we're going we're gonna to want to add some detail we're going to want to break up the monotony the gray the or this gray uh, train right here is the equivalent of an unpainted army we're going to want to add some flair we're going to want to add some texture some detail we're going to want to add some life and pizzazz to bring this thing to life, we're gonna go with some bright, bright orange. It's almost red, so it's like it almost makes it go faster. 
Like this, this terrain piece goes from zero inches per movement uh, to 0 0.001 inches per movement because the orange ones make it slightly faster. It's a little bit of a orc tech for you guys if you didn't know. We're actually going to add a bit of a brass. Uh, it is brass copperish. It's similar to the orange. Uh, but I just didn't want to add more gray. I feel like the gray uh, is a bit overdone right here. So guys, if you are a better painter than I, maybe you did not make quite as much of a mess, and I hope that is the case for you guys. But because I'm not the cleanest painter, I'm going back over and cleaning up uh, this with a small brush and then getting some of my leg to make sure uh, I can color my leg hair gray so it looks nice and stressed out. I have nice and stressed legs. All right, now we're going to be getting a little bit of a lighter gray, and we're just gonna dry brush this thing. Lightly brush over this, and see how it's starting to pick up on the raised parts of this, adding a bit of depth to the model. So as you can see, there's now starting to get a little bit of texture as we dry brush, brush around this thing, especially on those ridges of the beveled edges right here. You can see there's a lot more texture on the raised parts. So now that we've dry brushed this, we're gonna take this to the next level because this looks this looks pretty happy. It's kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese, like it's exciting, like there's Chuck E. and his big old smile. What we, what we wanna do is take this to the 41st millennium. How we're gonna do that is with a little bit, and by a little bit, I mean I mean a healthy amount of black wash. So what black wash is, it's essentially glorified watered down black paint, a little bit of dish detergent or um, dish wash to make it uh, extra runny, but we're gonna take this and we're going to spread it around all over it. After applying the black wash, we're now gonna let it dry as it begins the slow process before we give it a final dry brush and fix up the details, such as the rebarb sticking out. We'll add a little bit of rust, a little bit of texture to those, and then clean up some parts, add a little bit more uh, precise point of grunginess, and then we will be done. The black wash is dry and as we pick out some of the details with the dry brush, you can see that it's starting to look a lot more grungy, a lot more dingy. Some people have died on this, some people have died to this thing, some skulls have been bashed, some bolts have been shot, and you can tell when you're doing well when you start to see a bit of a wog start to appear right over there. You can see a few uh, green skins coming in. Uh, we better hurry this quick before they tear my arms off. For this last portion, I actually am going to be using some Citadel paint. It is the technical typist corrosion, which is a really good way of adding some grit, adding some detail to your minis, to your dioramas, to your terrain. So what we're gonna do is spill that. Ooh, uh-oh. Once you've spilled that, you can now officially put it on your train. You can't put any on your train until you spill some. Uh, we're going to spread it all over the rebarb, uh, and it's gonna add this nice, really gritty texture to it. And while the typhus corrosion is drying, we're gonna take a little bit more black wash and selectively put some points of dirt and whatnot. So we can take a nice, small, fine point brush, and what you're gonna wanna do is kind of just pick a point right here, and then kind of just help it trail down. Maybe it's some rainwater, maybe just some muck, whatever it is. It just adds a little bit of extra detail, maybe along the edges of the window as rainwater trails down. And by now the typhus corrosion is nice and dry, and I'm gonna take some skag brown, which we're gonna to use to add a bit of the rust detailing to the rebarb. It's looking a bit more like rust, you know, just less like mud the exposed rebarb. Well guys, right here you've got the final product and you know that it is done when you start to see a green tide flowing in like we do right here. And I'd say that I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm honestly pretty new to the terrain building game, but I've really enjoyed getting down and <laughs> clearly very dirty. Uh, thankfully, only my desk has gotten dirty, not the carpet. Right over here, out of the scene, is a huge mess. You can see the Mod Podge, all the stuff is just hiding the mess that I've made. But guys, if you like this content, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you want to see get built. Maybe it's more orc train, maybe you want to see some Imperium stuff, maybe it's Spooktober and you want to see some Chaos Demons. Leave a comment down below on what you want to see, guys, and hit that subscribe button if you want some more tabletop goodness, guys. My name's Alex. This has been Major League Nerd. Peace.